All right. We are going to um, sort of conclude our um, initial study of, pre of um, stress conjugate uh, terms and uh, alternate measures of stress by pointing out or, or demonstrating that the balance of linear momentum, which we wrote in terms of the Cauchy stress and therefore on the current configuration, also has a form on the reference configuration. Okay? And, um, all right, so, so this is what we are aiming to do here. So we are going to call this uh, segment uh, the balance of linear momentum. on omega naught, okay? That's where we want to get to. We're going to take a, what may seem like a little circuitous route to get there, and the reason we're going to do this is um, because I need to um, clarify something bef uh, in, b before we can, actually, we can actually get to this point. Okay, so uh, recall, recall uh, what we've already uh, derived. Uh, which is balance of linear momentum on the current configuration, right? And the form that we, we, we obtain for this is the following. We saw that it is rho. Um, okay because I don't want to be writing all that stuff about uh, how the material time derivative is properly defined, I'm going to use this symbol, right, that we've already used a few times before. Capital dV dt implying the material time derivative, okay? The material time derivative of the velocity is uh, divergence of sigma plus the body force, okay? in omega t. And, and strictly speaking, the, since this uh, partial, partial differential equation also has time dependence, we should be saying that it is defined over that spatial domain and over this time domain. Okay? All right? Uh, that simply means the closed interval from zero to capital T uh, in time. All right? So this is a closed time interval, okay? And remember, closed simply means that the endpoints are included in that interval, okay? So the times zero and time capital T are also included in that interval. All right, uh, we have this form. Now, now, now remember how, where, where we started to get this, right? We, we, we got this, uh, so arrived what we did was we arrived at above form by starting with, okay, we started with the balance of linear momentum in integral form, right? So we, we, we started out by saying, okay, what we really need to do is this. We're talking of the rate of change of uh, linear momentum on the current configuration, right? And we said that this is equal to the force uh, acting at every point in the body. That was the body force, okay? And we said there is a boundary traction, right? And we did this, okay? All right, this is what we did. Now, so I set this up in this form with this final integral, this final surface integral over this boundary subset for a particular reason, which was that I wanted to just focus upon the case where the external traction was specified only on some boundary subset, okay? Okay, now, 
Now, one may ask, well, what happens about the, what happens with the rest of the boundary, right? The rest of the, the, the other parts. Two things can happen, okay? Um, what one, one thing that one can do is the following. One can extend um, this boundary subset to all of the boundary, okay? Which would mean that now we would have a situation in which the traction was specified on the entire boundary, okay? So over the entire boundary, we would have a traction vector distribution specified, okay? Over the entire boundary, okay? Or, uh, what one can do is also specify what are called displacement boundary conditions. on the displacement boundary, which is denoted as that, right, where little u indicates displacement, okay? So in this sort of situation, what we would have would be Okay, and the relation here between the different boundary subsets would be that the full, that the entire boundary is the union of the traction boundary with the displacement boundary. Okay, and for technical reasons, we should be putting a bar over that to say that, well, if we missed any points which lie at the boundary, you know, the boundary between these two boundary subsets, Right, the interface, such as any, if there are any questions with, with, with what is happening with that point, with those points, we put a bar over it to say that, well, we include those points. Okay, that's strictly technical, so we don't need to worry about it too much. Okay, uh, so we have these two situations. Okay, uh, what one needs to do then is to properly extend the integral form of the balance of linear momentum to we need to extend the integral form as follows, right? We have the time derivative of the linear momentum with well, body force as before, nothing to be done here, plus for the two forms that we've just introduced, we could say the following, right? In the first case where we said that, well, the traction is defined everywhere on the body, we would simply have this, right? Case one, right? And this is when this is indeed the, the entire boundary, right? Or we have DDT. Of the uh, of the linear momentum equals the body force term plus the following. Right? We say that all right. We have over the traction boundary subset the effect of the of, of the ex external traction that we're specifying over the other part of the boundary. Right? And I'm just going to back up a slide here just to remind ourselves of what, what the second case is. Over this part of the boundary, right, the displacement boundary, right, even though we know that we don't have a traction vector specified on the displacement boundary as we have on the traction boundary, okay, and in fact on this, on this displacement boundary we will say that we have u equals u bar, right, u bar is the specified displacement. Even still, right, the body does develop a stress, okay, right? In particular, it, it develops a stress as we approach the boundary, 
And in particular, it does develop a boundary, an effective boundary traction, but that comes from inside the body. It's not specified by us. We are specifying the displacement on these parts, but the body in response does generate a traction, right? And we know from Cauchy that the traction is sigma n, okay? Of course, at every point here, we can indeed define a normal vector n, okay? So what happens is that, getting back here, over the remaining part of the boundary, we actually have this term. Okay? We don't know the traction, right? We don't know the traction because we are not specifying it. We are not controlling it on this part of the boundary. But the body in response does develop a stress and therefore a traction. Okay? All right? So, uh, the, the, the case that we had, uh, that, that, that we had worked with earlier was a special case of, of the first, it was, it was a special version of the first case here, right? It was this case where we said that, well, you know, the traction is non-zero over some subset of the boundary and zero over the rest of it, okay? But these two forms really are, are, are the complete ones, okay? All right. Essentially, what that, what we can do now from here is we, we invoke Cauchy. Right? We say, well, Cauchy tells us this also. Okay? And this is because of Cauchy. Okay? And then what we see is that these two cases are unified, all right? Which to, 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 to let us write, d d t integral omega t rho v d v equals integral over omega t b f d v plus integral over the partial of all of omega t now, right? Instead, we don't have t or we don't have the traction anymore because we say it's replaced with that term. Okay? Right? And this holds in both cases. And by both cases, we mean the case that this is the, the entire boundary or the case that the entire boundary actually is these two bound is the union of these two boundary subsets okay this is general and from here we proceed as before right from here we apply the divergence theorem Okay, which lets us say then that, um, well, okay, let me, sorry, I'm going to back up the slide just, just once. On the last term, we apply the divergence theorem. On the first term, we apply Reynolds transport theorem. Okay. And with these two, what we do get is the following, right? we get integral over omega t rho material time derivative of the velocity integral over omega t um, we get the body force d little v plus integral over omega t now what Gauss does for us, what Gauss does for us is to say that those stress terms on the boundary give us this. Okay? And then we localize this and, and we and we get our final form of the balance of linear momentum. Okay?
Okay, so what we had worked out earlier was a somewhat uh, simplified version of this. This is the form we have for the balance of linear momentum in the, in the current configuration. Okay, and that little uh, digression on how the boundary is properly treated is, um, you know, sort of clarifies things. Okay, what I'm going to do now is uh, go back into the, into the reference configuration. Okay, and um, in order to do that, I am going to take a couple of steps back to the following form of the balance of linear momentum, but the integral version of it, okay? So let me just say, um, go back to the form that we had as the last equation on the previous slide, uh, which was integral over uh, omega t, okay, we were going to take the time derivative of this integral, rho v d little v equals integral over omega t bf d little v plus, now properly without having to worry about what we are doing at the boundary, we have sigma n dA. All right. Okay. Now I'm going to, in one fell swoop, rewrite this over the reference configuration. Okay. So what we're going to do here is the following. We're going to say that, well, the DDT says this integral on the left-hand side, I'm simply going to rewrite over the reference configuration, but that is just rho zero, capital V. Okay. And, um, I will write the arguments just once, okay? Now, integral over omega naught for the first term on the right-hand side. Now, BF is uh, the body force per unit current volume, but that is very easily converted into uh, a body force per unit reference volume when we realize that d little v, right, is just j d capital V, where j again is the determinant of the deformation gradient, all right? And what this lets us do is to simply redefine this product as, let's say, capital B f, okay? Body force, per unit reference volume, okay? Now, this last term, we're going to rewrite it as an integral over the boundary of the reference configuration and we have the fact that sigma n d little a, we said was first Piola Kirchhoff stress multiplied by the area vector in the reference configuration, right? Why does this work? Because actually this is how we introduced the first Piola Kirchhoff stress P, okay? If you go back a couple of segments and look back at our very first step of bringing P into the picture, this is what we said. We said, well, that the integral over the current configuration, right, of the traction can also be rewritten as, as this form over the reference configuration, okay? And what was what was critical in going from here to here was this idea of dead loading, right? Right? Which was that whether we look at the body loaded in the reference configuration or in the current configuration, we say that we are maintaining the traction on it, right? It's, that it's the same traction on it, okay? So I'm just going to draw a figure to represent all this. We have the reference configuration. Um, now, here again, all of this works, right? We may, we are, we are completely allowed to have this decomposition of the boundary in the reference configuration into a traction boundary, 
and a displacement boundary. All right. Now, on this traction boundary, if that is our normal vector, okay, uh, let me actually call that the area vector, okay, and that is the traction, okay. What we're saying is that capital T dA is the force being applied there. Okay, the little the little amount of force that's being applied there, the elemental force T D A. Okay, in the current configuration, we have our boundary subset. Okay, and here, this would be our area vector, and that would be our force vector. Okay. And what we are seeing is that this um, is equal, all right? And T D capital A from Cauchy's theorem is P N D capital A, okay? And here T D little a also from Cauchy's theorem is sigma little n dA, okay? And now I can put a big equal to sign between them, all right? Okay? And so let me rewrite then what we had on the previous slide, okay? We had ddt of uh, integral over omega naught rho zero material velocity d capital V equals integral over omega naught. Now I have body force per unit reference volume d capital V plus integral over the entire boundary, okay, P capital N dA, okay. We just need to invoke the Gauss divergence theorem for this term. Okay, we don't really need anything special here because uh, on the left hand side, because that integral is indeed over the reference configuration. All right, by so doing, what we get is essentially what we're going to get is that Gauss tells us now that P N D A is simply divergence of P. Okay, so what this gives us then is an integral over omega naught rho zero partial of capital V with respect to time d capital V equals integral over omega naught bf plus. Now, I'm going to write a, uh, I'm going to introduce this operator capital div of P. Okay, D capital V, all right, where this, right, div P, it's a vector, uh, it has free index little i, okay, it is basically partial of P little i capital I with respect to the reference configuration, okay? That index capital I is lost in the process, okay? So we have a free index little i, okay? So and then, of course, by localization, because this holds over every uh, little sub-volume, okay? So the localization argument says that uh, the above integral integral holds for all omega naught tilde, subset of omega naught, okay? 
So now, since we've moved away from the current configuration, we can focus just on the reference configuration. And essentially what we're saying is that, yeah, if this is omega naught, we could very well have chosen a little subset of omega naught, called it omega naught tilde, and gone through exactly the same arguments. In that case, we would be talking of the traction vector uh, being applied there. Okay? All right? That's what we would have been talking of in that case, right, on, on, on the surface of that little subset, okay? Because the above integral then holds for, the, for, for any such uh, subvolume of the reference configuration, okay, what that implies is that we actually have this form holding, right? It essentially says that, well, now when we put all of this together in a single integral because the limits of integration are all omega naught. When we pull everything together in a single integral, we invoke this idea of localization. This essentially says, well, that the integrands have to all cancel out, right? And what that means then is that we have uh, here, I'm just going to rearrange this, the reference divergence of P plus the body force per unit reference volume in now omega naught cross the time interval, okay? All quantities here are defined on the reference configuration, okay? Except for P, of course, which has this sort of dual nature in terms of what, you know, in terms of its two indices. However, if we look at the, par the parametrization of P, okay, it is uh, properly in the reference configuration, okay? So, what we have here then is the balance of linear momentum in the reference configuration, which is completely equivalent to the balance of linear momentum in the current configuration. Pictorially, this means this, okay? On omega naught, we would be saying that rho zero partial of V with respect to time equals the divergence of the first Piola Kirchhoff plus BF, okay? And in the current configuration, we also have a balance of linear momentum, okay? And in this case, it is that, right? Material time derivative of the spatial velocity equals the divergence, and that is our symbol for the divergence with respect to the current configuration, plus body force per unit current volume, okay? And all of this happens under the deformation, okay? So, picture then is this. Reference configuration, we have this idea of uh, attraction vector, all right? And, uh, and, and, and then from this traction vector, we can arrive at uh, the first pure Kirchhoff stress. We know what the balance is uh, in terms of that first pure Kirchhoff stress. Everything deforms, okay? The traction vector maintains its orientation in space and its magnitude, okay? When the traction vector is defined as a little element force, right? So that's properly the stress, the Cauchy stress, acting on the normal in the current configuration, right? Multiplied by dA, okay? So that then invokes for us the Cauchy stress in the current configuration, we know what its balance is, okay? We've written it out here on the slide on the current configuration, okay? They're completely equivalent ways of writing out things. Okay, we'll just stop here.